This was a very popular hangout, actually, for Hunter S. Thompson. Welcome back to the Happy Hour, guys, and welcome back to Aspen, Colorado, at nearly 8,000 feet. We're about to mix up some crud. Welcome back to the Happy Hour, guys. I'm standing underneath the sign for the J-Bar, which is part of the Hotel Jerome. There's been a bar on this site since 1889. Now, we always ask this when we talk about places that have been around since before the dreaded 18th Amendment. What happened to this place during Prohibition? I'm just gonna give you two words. Aspen crud. <laughs> Come on, let's check it out. Follow me in. So welcome to the J-Bar. We are here with Nina Gabianelli, who is, thank you very much, I, I try, I try. This is Aspen Crud, by the way. Can you see that? Look at that. I am the Director of Programming and Education for the Aspen Historical Society. A little bit of this. Hold on. That back bar is the original back bar. Wow. It completely doesn't oh. fit in the room, does no. it? <laughs> no, there was so much money in this community. People in the 1880s from Aspen were traveling internationally. They were traveling to Asia. They were traveling to Africa. They were traveling to the Hawaiian Islands by huh. steamship. That lended itself to the, the design styles in both furniture and, and, and uh, buildings as well huh. um, in the period. So that was where that influence came from. That's awesome. Is there a really fun story about the J-Bar, this particular space that you know of that you could bring well, across to us from I'm the, oh, you brought research. She brought research. That's right, Nina. Tell us the Hunter S. Thompson story. The story is this, and it is a you know, second-hand, third-hand story, so it's a story. I want to make clear this is a story. Hunter was drinking at the bar here one night, and a couple came in after having traveled days upon days to get to Aspen because they knew Hunter S. Thompson was here. They were so much fans of his work that they had you know, sold what they owned to travel here and made this great journey that had taken them forever and, you know, who knows, like their old VW bus or something. <laughs> and um, they came up to him at the bar. Um, and tapped on his shoulder and he turns around and takes a look at them and the husband tells him you know how much they're fans of his work and how much they like him and were so enamored with him and, and just wanted the opportunity to have a little conversation if he had some time and Hunter's response is this there was a vial of in the bar um, and he actually the wife uh, evidently was uh, well endowed and um, Hunter took advantage of this and actually <laughs> right along her breast <laughs> turned back around and never spoke to them again. A lesson we should all take to heart, let drinking Hunter S. Thompson's keep drinking. So that leaves us with one tasty loose end to tie up. I, I need to just take a little quick Absolutely. break. So what's the deal with Aspen Crud? Turns out that during Prohibition, the J-Bar in the Hotel Jerome turned itself into an ice cream parlor. So the kids could come and get a shake, <laughs> and so could the adults. A quick word about the food, they'll put sweet potato fries and truffle fries next to just about anything. The burgers are great, and so are the salads. And they have free popcorn. How bad can life be? So come on into Aspen, check out the J-Bar, ask for an Aspen Crud. They don't make them all the time, but they do make them and they're fantastic. I'm talking five scoops of ice cream and three shots of bourbon. You got your dairy, you got your dairy, and your bourbon. Pretty much covers it, really, for the day. Thanks so much for being with us this week. We'll see you next time. Cheers. How you doing? Can he hear you? I think he can. Okay. Yeah. Wireless.